Hello everybody, it's Christopher Naiman back for part two of bobbin work. So you can see I've been testing more decorative stitches with the bobbin work. And look how beautiful that is. You know, the cool thing about this is, you know, it gives a 3D appearance because it's raised off the surface so beautifully. And that's, depending upon what yarn you use, gives it the sparkle. So, are you ready to do some more and learn some more? All right, stay with me. I'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. First of all, I switch machines. I'm going to do this second part on uh, my Janome. I just had a major cleanup on my Janome. I did some new detailing. I went to clean this Janome with alcohol, like I clean all my machines on the surface and the alcohol wiped away all the print. So the name Janome has gone and the Gen Memory Craft 9000 is gone. And I thought, wow, that they really didn't have very good printing back then because all my other brand machines when I go to wipe, nothing ever comes off that's that printed on there. So, but, oh, I think it, I think it turned out good. I gave it a nice little facelift. You know, see, I put some decal on there. I think it look, come out nice, it looks brand new looks really really brand new okay let's move on okay so in my last video I talked about how brother had very wide uh, decorative stitches they didn't have like the real intense satin stitches like like Janome does so the machine that I have right now is very limited on its decorative stitches but we do have this was a stitch I just stitched out right here and so we're going to go through this and see what kind of stitch I can choose to do some um, testing for the bobbin work here. But the, re the these in blue here and this in uh, this lavender color were, were done on my brother PC6000. So you can see how the open, more open, wide stitch is so much better for bobbin work. You see that? All right, let me see what we can find. Okay, so let's see what I can do. I want to find a Greek key to do. So I'm going to go here, and I need to go to stitch number 131. All right, this is Greek key. And then I want to make sure it's the widest and longest that I can make it. So I'm going to go to stitch. Okay, and that's 7.0 and 2.5 is the longest and widest that it'll go. All right, so now let me stitch it out. So now, something I want to point out with this machine, this machine does take a class 15 bobbin, and uh, plastic is the bobbin that this normally takes. And this does have a bobbin sensor to tell you when you're out of bobbin also, which is really, really great. Uh, Another reason why this machine was so good, this Janome 9000 was such a great machine for its time. Um, but the only thing, the only thing missing was a scissor cutter, which we don't need to use for bobbin work. But what I'm doing is um, I'm using a, a metal bobbin, and we're going to be using the Christmas color red here. It's a Christmas color red thread. So why don't I try it on this black fabric? Now one thing you want to make sure is when you're doing bobbin work that you've got some stable fabric. If for any reason you're only sewing on one layer and it's not stable enough, starch it to make it a little stiffer for yourself, okay? All right, so now because I can't reach the foot pedal uh, I'm behind my camera, I'm going to use my automatic start and stop button right here. I call this the handicap start and stop button uh, without a foot pedal because this, these machines that have the start and stop button are great for people in wheelchairs that can't use their legs. So the start and stop button is great. And then there's the speed control that you can control. So I'm going to just work my speed control as if it's my foot pedal. Bobbin work is so much fun. All right, let's test this and see what this looks like. 
So I'm going to pull it to the side. If I, now normally if I was going to be using this for something special, for real, I would make it long enough thread to pull to the back, but I don't need to. Not for this demo. Okay, so there's a great key with the top stitching. Um, now remember, when you do bobbin work, your, your actual, the front of the fabric is to the feed dogs. And the back of the fabric is, is upwards, and that's what you're sewing here. So the bobbin work actually is seen on the front of the fabric. And this is what we have. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. See this red on that black? Oh my gosh. What festive Christmas things could you make out of this? And I have red thread. You know, as you see, I, I stitch with red thread. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Think about what? Uh, oh, maybe a black trims tree skirt with rows of this and gold and red. Wouldn't that be pretty? That'd be so pretty. As a matter of fact, I have some gold thread. So let's just, let's try it, guys. Let's see. So pop this, pop this bobbin out. And see, you bypass the tension on the bobbin. You don't use the tension on the bobbin. You bypass it. All right, put my foot down, needle down, needle up, pull the bobbin thread up. There we go. Put that under here. So newbies, if you've never done this before, you're learning now. And there's so many creative things you could do with sewing. I mean, it's limitless. And you can do bobbin work on any machine. You can do bobbin work on any machine. You just bypass that tension part of the bobbin. All right, so let's try this with... I'm just going to leave the red top thread in um, and see what it looks like like this. Ready? Here we go. Oh, notice when I started stitching, I made sure that there was thread pulled out to the back. It's very important. Make sure your thread is pulled out to the back so it doesn't get tangled under there. All right, let's see what this looks like. These nips are great. These are great nips. You get these online on eBay. They're really great. Thread snips. All right, you ready to see what it looks like? Here's what we just stitched. Now let's look underneath. Wow. Wow. So pretty, isn't it? Gosh, that's beautiful. That is so so beautiful and if I use clear thread for the top on this or matching gold thread on top gold sewing thread mm, with this look at this sh shimmer metallic type black printed fabric here cotton fabric isn't that beautiful so nice there's a little angle shot of that so all kinds of different stitches you can use. So let's try another stitch on this machine. Let's do another decorative stitch on this machine, but let's see here. Should I try a different bobbin thread? Now this one here, this is, this is not metallic, but let's see what this would look like. I'll just, you know what, let me just keep the Greek key on there so you can see a difference in all these. All right, so we're gonna do that, down, down. Down, bring that up. There we go. That's all there is to it. It's not that difficult. Just remember, you want uh, pretty open, wide stitches, and you want to make sure that it has the longest, the longest uh, stitch length, and the widest stitch length. What do I do with my bobbin cover? Has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened to you where you lose your bobbin cover? There we go. If you're like me, you got two of everything. I got backups of everything. <laughs> I do. I got backups of everything. All right. All right. So let's see what this. Uh, I'm gonna see what this thread looks like. Here we go.
and I have a satin stitch foot on. This is Janome's satin stitch foot. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so ready? Interesting, right? That's got an interesting look to it. And whatever top thread you're using makes a big difference in how it's really going to look under here as well. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's look at some different stitches we can try. So let's just look at basic utilitarian stitches because most machines have those basic stitches. So let's let's scroll and see what the utilitarian stitches are we can use. There's your feather stitch I did earlier. This is a nice decorative stitch. This is an overcast satin stitch, uh, overcast foot for stretch it looks like. That's a knit stitch. Yep. Knit st uh, this is a knit stitch. Let's see here. Let's think this is heirloom. Hem stitch, yep, yeah, that's a hem stitch. Hem stitch. Hem stitch. Hem stitch. Briar. I call that the feather stitch. Now, this is a nice stitch to use too. Um, this is a, like a star, but if you got it, you want to make sure if you're going to use the star one that it's you can really widen it. Let's see if I can widen this one. Let's see how much I can widen it. No, it won't let me go very long. I mean, we could try it, but I, I don't want to um, take that chance because I know that one's too tight. There's other stitches that might be w longer. Um, let's see, I think number 35. Let's go to the menu. Let's go here. Let's see. Oh, that was 35. Okay, yeah, that one. Let's just keep going here and look see what's up here 65 how big is 65 let me see if I can adjust that I guess it won't let me adjust it oh these are pre-programmed they won't let me override on these all right so let's just keep looking let me see will they let me oh this one will let me override uh, let's look here let me go back to that one and see Will it let me override? No, it will not. How about this one? That's a nice cross stitch that will not let me override. Yeah, you want to be able to override if you can or see what the stitch length and width is. Let's see here. This is this has always been a classic one to use here. This one here. Oh, see, there's so many to choose from. There was that Greek key that we did earlier. I showed you earlier. So, oh, let's try this one, number 145. And, okay, so that's the, the 2.5 and the width is 7.0. Yeah, let's try that one. Okay, so now I'm going to use silver. Let's drop the silver in here. Now, like I said, whatever you use for top stitch thread is going to take on a whole different look. I just want to give you guys a sample of what this, how easy this is to do. All right, let's turn it back over and let's start another row here. Let's start a new row down here. All right, here we go. See what this looks like. You ready? Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. Isn't that nice? 
All right, so newbies, are you thinking of new things you can make with this? Are you coming up with ideas? Are you come up with more ideas? Look, look at the potential you have with your sewing machines now. You didn't think that you could do so much, did you? The creativity is limitless, people. It really is. See, that's what I'm saying. Once you know your sewing machine and you know all these little tricks and different things you can do, you can make anything. I mean, you can make, oh my gosh, so much, so much. And uh, yeah, so it's just unbelievable. Then here was, again, let's look at the stitches here from the brother machine. There's a basic stitch there. These here, we did that, show that in another video. There's just so much. This is a railroad stitch. Let's try the railroad stitch on this machine. Uh, I call it railroad because it looks like railroad tracks. Let me find the railroad stitch on this machine. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see where the railroad stitch is. Here we go. Sorry. All right. They call it a ladder stitch. I call it a railroad stitch because it looks like a railroad. All right, let's do it. See what this looks like. So that's the ladder stitch. This reminds me of a railroad track and a ladder, you yeah. know. And here's underneath. Yeah, I'm not too happy with that. Probably have to override the tension, but for this, just maybe it's the thread in the bobbin. So let's try, let's try in the red and see what happens. Sometimes you have to tighten your tension, which you just saw on that one right there. And sometimes the thread on the actual bobbin wasn't wound tight enough for certain stitches. This may be not, this may be not wide enough either, but let's just try with another st stitch in there and see, or another th different thread. Okay, now I'm going to increase the tension. So I'm going to go to my tension setting and it will not allow me to override the tension on that. Okay, so, all right, I hear you. All right, let's see what it looks like. I want to make sure I don't have to. Let me just make sure. Auto tension. Okay, it won't let me. All right, let's see. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, it might be too close to get. It might be too much and too close together. Yeah, it's too close together. See how mushy that looks. Don't like that one. Don't like that one. So every machine, you have to check out the decorative stitches on it. So let me look at this and see what other decorative stitch I want to choose on here. All right. So now I'm going to do that feather stitch, which they call. It's also called patchwork stitch, but every 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 brand's got a different name for it. I think I think brother calls it a faggoting stitch. Yeah. I want to see if I can override the tension on that. Nope, won't let me override the tension either. Okay. Alright, let's see. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, much nicer. Isn't that nice? That's really pretty. That's really pretty. That's like the brother one I did earlier in my last video. And this is the Janome version. 
All right, guys, this is part two. Showed you a little more, see how much fun it is. Try it on your machine, see how you like it. And uh, comment below and, and talk to everybody and see how everybody's doing. And this was a test I did earlier, the Greek key on this one. I just love, I think a Greek key come out so pretty. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.